In this video, I want to discuss how I research stocks and how you can get the most information and perspective about companies while you're doing your own research. Obviously, everything in this video will just be my preference and what works for me. So if it's helpful for you, then that's great. But there's no reason to do exactly what I do if it doesn't work out and make sense for you. In the end, it all falls back into the personal finance bubble, which, uh, like I've said many times, is inherently personal. So whatever makes the most sense to you is probably the best research method but these are just some of my ideas and things that work for me and similarly if you disagree with something i'm doing or do something a little bit differently i'd love to hear about it in the comments down below as it makes spark some ideas for myself or other investors so before we get started it's important to decide what kind of an investment we want to make so if you're looking for the fastest growing company out there and don't mind taking a decent amount of risk then your research is probably going to look a little different that from someone that that just wants to preserve their wealth and pull income out of the portfolio over a long period of time with minimal risk. So my goals are probably somewhere in the middle of those two extremes that I just presented. Um, but specifically, I look for generally stable companies that have moderate growth potential, strong financials, and a competitive advantage in their market. Additionally, I want to be able to determine the fair value or intrinsic value of the company so that I can buy the stock when it's trading near or below the intrinsic value value. Notice that I do use the word company as often as possible because that's what I'm researching is really a company. The stock part of the equation only really matters at the very end of the research process when we're trying to determine if the stock is trading above or below the intrinsic value. So the first thing I'll usually do in the research process is to look at some quick metrics about the company to see if it's something I'm remotely interested in at all. And in this phase, I'm very lenient and generally just want to see that revenue is stable or growing, that earnings are stable or growing, and that the total debt isn't orders of magnitude larger than the earnings. And usually if one or even two of these metrics doesn't look too great, that's probably not a deal breaker. And I'll try to figure out later on in the research why these metrics look bad. But if all these metrics do look bad, then I'll usually just stop my research here and move on to the next company. And if the company does pay a dividend, then at this point, um, I'm going to look at the dividend. And I just want to see that the company has been able to consistently pay the dividend and hopefully increase it. And then I'll also look at the payout ratio as well to make sure that the dividend is sustainable. And I like to see payout ratios generally below 60%, but there's reasons that the payout ratio could be all the way up to 80% or above and be totally fine. Um, but in the case of all these metrics, I'm always looking at trends over many years. And uh, there's lots of reasons that a company could have a less than ideal year for one or two years, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad company. And also in this step, in terms of where I find this information, I use the website Macro Trends for a lot of this information, uh, especially about the revenue and earnings. And then I use Seeking Alpha for some of the dividend data. The next thing that I like to do is to get an understanding of the company's business model. And that really means the different ways that the company brings in revenue and how that revenue is split up between the different business segments. And it's also important to understand the relative profitability of those segments as one segment could be bringing in most of the revenue while another segment is producing most of the profit. Uh, you can find lots of this info in a company's annual 10K report. The first major section they're required to report on discusses the company's business and lots of risk factors associated with the business as well. It's also important to understand the industry and the environment that the company is operating in, which is kind of part of the business, but I wanted to make a separate note here. Uh, usually this type of info is a little bit more difficult to obtain, but sometimes if you read just a few quarterly reports and kind of listen to some of the things that management is saying, uh, that can generally give you some more education on the industry as a whole. And it can also be helpful to look, you know, at some annual or quarterly reports from other similar companies that are in, uh, you know, the same industry because these companies may use different wordage. Uh, they may, you know, say things in different ways that might give more context to the industry and or might just make more sense to you personally. The next big thing that I look at is the financial health of the company. And most of this analysis can be done by looking at a company's balance sheet. And this could be a whole video on its own, but here's a few basic things I look at 
First of all, you generally want to see current assets larger than current liabilities, which means that they'll have no trouble paying off their short term liabilities or short term obligations over the next year. And it's really not a deal breaker if this requirement isn't met, but it is a little security blanket in a worst case scenario for sure. Another good thing to see is relatively low current maturities of long term debt over time. And this means that the amount of debt they have to pay back isn't swinging wildly from year to year, uh, which would make it difficult to pay down debt potentially in some years. And on the subject of debt, I do like to see net debt to be really no more than two times the net income of the company. And usually I'll kind of average out the net income over the past two to three years and use that uh, just to kind of get a better understanding of what the company's um, net income could be um, in most years. Uh, but again, this isn't really an incredibly precise science. The purpose of this is just to kind of give us an idea of how quickly the company could pay off their debt. And that two year uh, number is kind of a good benchmark, but it's definitely uh, not a super precise number that always has to be met. The final qualitative item that I like to look at is the management. And again, this isn't the easiest thing to get a feel for. But the first thing you can look for is how long senior management has been around. If there's a lot of turnover in the senior management, that's definitely not a good sign because it means that something really isn't working out quite right and the management and the board knows it and they're trying to, you know, make some changes, which ultimately, you know, changes could be good. But if, you know, they're not getting it right and they keep having to make more and more changes, then that's really not the best thing to see. Um, it can also be helpful to go back a few years and try to understand what the management was talking about three or five years ago and what they were you know, promising to investors and consumers and stuff like that and see if they have delivered on their promises or messages. Um, if they didn't deliver on it, you want to understand, did they address the issue at some point or uh, provide you know, a meaningful analysis of what went wrong or did they just kind of stop talking about it and kind of try to throw it under the rug and hopefully hope that people forgot about it. Um, if the company said five years ago, for example, that they were very focused on reducing debt, and then you know five years later, uh, the debt really wasn't changed, or maybe it's even higher, then uh, that's not a good sign. And it shows that management isn't really delivering um, on what they're saying. And they're just kind of saying things and not really following through. This process can definitely be uh, a little difficult, and it can take up lots of time. But in some companies, the senior management can play a big role in the company's success or lack thereof. So it's pretty important sometimes to figure this out and really make the distinction and have an understanding of you know your assessment of the management and whether you think they're doing a good job or not. And after you've done all this research, if you're still interested in investing in the company, then the final step here is to determine the actual fair value of the company so you can decide whether you want to actually buy it or not. So there's a variety of ways of doing this. Uh, for example, you could just look at the PE ratio and compare it to maybe the company's historical PE ratio or the current market's average PE ratio. That's definitely a pretty simplistic approach. There are a variety of specific calculations you can do such as a discounted cash flow or a dividend discount model uh, you can also look at the value of the assets as a baseline using something like the book value or shareholders equity or even the current assets um, but ultimately the best valuation method is going to vary from industry to industry and company to company based on the specific conditions that the business operates in. Uh, for me personally, for most companies, I try to use the PE ratio in conjunction with a discounted cash flow model, uh, but that definitely doesn't always work in all scenarios. There's lots of resources and information out there online on YouTube, on lots of websites about various valuation metrics and how you can apply them to different companies. So I'll just point you to some of those materials because those will probably do a better job of explaining uh, the different types of methods you can use and when you want to use them. It's also important to keep in mind that these valuation calculations should be used like a range of values and not as a super precise value. If someone could come up with a precise and accurate intrinsic value calculation, then there would be no reason for people to transact in the market and there would really be no opportunities for attractive prices to appear. But rather, what really happens is that different investors will come up with different calculations of fair value and all those calculations will have some sort of assumptions baked into them and they will produce some sort of error to them. So it's important to take you know all those calculations with a grain of salt and realize that they, they do have some error 
uh, in them. And now we have reached the end of what I would do to research a company in general. And not once have I really mentioned anything about the stock price. Uh, like I just said, once you've done the research on the company and decided you want to own it, then you can calculate the fair value like we just discussed. And then once you actually have the fair value, then you can compare that to where it's trading in the market, where the stock's trading at right now. And you know, if the stock is trading near or below the fair value, then it could potentially be a good uh, opportunity to buy. Um, obviously, there's a lot more factors at play here. So just because the stock is, you know, near or below the fair value, that doesn't mean you should instantly go out and buy it. Um, some of these factors might be, you know, how much capital you have available, how many stocks you want to own in your portfolio and how much you know time you have to manage this portfolio and there's lots of other things as well but in terms of actually researching the companies i hope this gives you a rough guideline of how i research stocks to invest in i definitely you know don't follow this process you know perfectly every time and sometimes i think i should probably be doing more research um, but this is kind of the process that i try to follow and um, you know, I'm always trying to learn and get better as I go. So if you do have any specific techniques or strategies that you use when you're doing research, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. And I'm sure other people would love to hear as well. Thanks for watching to the end of the video and I'll see you all in the next one.